Hey guys and welcome back for another video tutorial. Today I'm going to be uh, going over uh, an ANSYS tutorial uh, about plastic deformation of an I-beam with a uniformly varying load. So, I mean, normally we would consider uh, a, a symmetrically uniformly distributed load, uh, but in this case I'm going to change it up and make it a varying load and it's going to be a I-beam that is going to be fixed on one end so it's going to be a cantilever beam. And um, basically, the, the key here is the plastic deformation. So we're going to be going over um, the plastic deformation of this beam. So as you can see here in this uh, diagram, there is, uh, on the y-axis, there's the uh, stress. And on the x-axis is the strain. And normally, when we do our analyses, we always want to stay within the elastic region. So in order for it not to fail, this is the region that we always use. But in this case, we're going to be uh, exploring the plastic region as well as the unloading scenario. So you'll have some residual strain um, after loading this and then unloading. So that's just basically the general idea. And um, an important thing to note is that when you're using uh, stress strain in the plastic region, you always want to use the true uh, stress and not the engineering stress. So when you input your data in ANSYS, you always want to use the true stress. So let's go ahead and dive right in. So let's go and open up ANSYS and uh, put in a static structural analysis into our project schematic. We're going to go ahead and call this um, I-beam, just to be simple. And then next, we're going to go into engineering data. So now in engineering data, the default material is structural steel, as expected. And um, basically what we want to do is that this default material is not uh, going to really work in the plastic region. It only has elastic parameters here. So in order to add the plastis, plasticity models, uh, we're going to go here and you can see here under the tool blocks, you can go and add a plasticity model here. So here are different types of models. The two models that I'm going to be going over are the, uh, well, primarily the bilinear. I'll also just explain quickly the multilinear uh, isotropic hardening. So the difference between these two is over here. So bilinear assumes two slopes. So you have your yield point, and then you have a tangent modulus, as, Anson, as ANSYS calls it, and that's going to be your plastic slope. And if you use a multilinear, well, then basically you have multiple points. So this is, let's say, if you did a tensile test or something, and you want to, and you got some some stress strain data, and you characterize your material, you can go ahead and plot these points in and get something more accurate. Now, the reason we are going to use a bilinear is in order to reduce the runtime and it speeds up the solve process. This is more time consuming. Uh, so bilinear is a simpler model, multilinear is normally more accurate because it can get all more details. So what you would do is, let's say if you wanted to go and add a plasticity model, you would uh, click on the bilinear, and you'd drag it over any property, and then here it would add the bilinear isotropic hardening material. So here you would put in your yield strength, let's say it would be 250, and then your tangent modulus, this would obviously have to be, uh, this is in megapascals, so it would be 250, and then let's say 1450, and then if you click on this, then that would be your stress uh, stress strain curve. Um, uh, again, sorry, this should be in megapascals. So yeah, so 1450. So and then we click again here. So that's that would be the that would be the tangent modulus. Now you can go ahead and delete this, and then if you let's say use a multilinear, you can drag it in. And then multilinear, just an example, you can do for different temperatures, different uh, different stress strain curves. Let's say at 22 degrees, we can put 0.01, 0.02, 0.05, let's say. And then this would be your yield stress. So again, you would want to change this. Uh, sorry, it's cut off here. But you would want to change this to uh, megapascals. And then here you would put, uh, let's say, 250, and then 260, and then 265. So then this would be your multilinear uh, stress strain curve. And this point here being uh, this point right here, so your yield point. Um, so that's it. But what we're going to do is we're not going to use this, this method. We're basically going to delete this. And ANSYS actually has a built-in library for this. So we can go ahead and click on Engineering Data Sources. And then here you have General Nonlinear Materials. So you can click on that. And then you can scroll down and then go here and add a structural NL for nonlinear. Then we can click on data sources again. And then now we have here our bilinear 
uh, already inputted uh, based on ANSYS. This is the ANSYS default. So our our material is has a yield of 250, and then the uh, tangent modulus is 1450. So that's what we're going to be using. So we can go ahead and close this, and then we're going to go ahead and uh, double click on geometry. But just before, we just uh, yeah, double click on geometry, and then this is going to load up a design modeler. So for the geometry, what I'm going to use is a, is an I beam. So I'm going to go ahead here, and basically from this website, I just got I picked up the first uh, I beam I could find. It's a W4 by 4 beam. And then here you have the uh, dimensions, height, uh, and the B for the for the width this way, and then the thicknesses. So as you can see 106, 103, 7.1. So anyway, I basically I'm going to take these parameters here, and I'm going to put them into ANSYS. So let's go into the design modeler, and go into the X Y plane, and do this uh, look at to go normal to it. And then what we're going to do is go sketching, and then in concept, we can go ahead and uh, do cross section and choose an eye section so this saves up this saves up time instead of drawing it manually so click on eye section and then there we have it we also want to change our units to millimeters so there we go um, so now we have our eye section and what I'm going to do is I'm going to input these values that I had before so uh, basically here are these values so 103 106 8.8 .8, and 7.1 so I'm going to put it here uh, 103 and then this is 103, and then this was uh, uh, 106, and then this is 8.8, .8, and then this is 8.8, .8, and then here we have 7.1. So that's our I beam. So that's basically again from uh, from this uh, from this website over here. You can go ahead and check it out, and you, I basically got the data from there. So once you have that, click on your I1 section and then click on extrude. And then we're going to go ahead and click here and do 500 millimeters. So we're going to extrude it 500 and hit generate. So there you go, you have your beam. Next, we're going to add some chamfers. So click on the chamfer button. And then we're going to select these edges. Holding control, you can select multiple edges. And then we're going to click on apply and we're going to add a five millimeter chamfer and then hit generate. So there we go. There's our I beam. Once that's done, you can go ahead and close it up. And then uh, moving along, we're going to open double click on the model to launch the model. So that's loading up. I'm just going to wait a few more uh, seconds here. It shouldn't be too long. All right, so there we go. So we have our model still loading. Okay, so here we have a question mark saying that the material is not assigned, so we're going to go ahead and click on the solid and then assign our structural steel nonlinear. And then next, we're going to go to the mesh, and then we're going to put a fine mesh. We'll go to sizing, and then here we're going to change the element size to 5 millimeters. And then we're going to go ahead and generate. If you have a slow computer, maybe put it to 25, because this is going to take a long time to solve. Uh, next, we can go into the analysis settings. And then because we're doing a loading and unloading, um, as you can see here, it's going to basically be like a loading and then an unloading case. So we're going to actually make two steps. So what we're going to do here is put number of steps. So we're going to put two. We're going to change the time stepping to on. And we're going to put initial substeps 30, minimum 30, and the maximum 100. And now, and finally, we're going to put large deflection to on. Now, the reason why we're going to add these substeps manually is because we really want to capture the plastic deformation effect that occurs. And uh, the, the uh, automatic uh, program controlled won't really do such a good job on it. So I want to actually just add more substeps uh, and break down the, the load uh, even more. And large deflection is because we're going to be plastically deforming. So usually when you have plastic deformation, it's always a good idea to keep large deflection on. And for the um, second step, as you can see here, we're going to actually leave that to auto time step because the unloading, we don't really care. The, the piece is already deformed. We don't need to have so much precision on the second step. Next here in structural, we can insert our fixed support. We're just going to rotate this around because our origin is on the other side, as you can see here. And then fix support, we're going to click on selection and we're going to choose this face and hit apply. So we're going to fix that. That's our cantilever beam. And then next we're going to right click and insert a pressure. 
Now we're going to click this face and hit apply. And then next, what we're going to do is instead of a magnitude, we're going to put uh, tabular. And then here in the table data, uh, we're going to go ahead and put four megapascals at time one and then zero at time two. This time is irrelevant here. It's really uh, the step. So step one will apply four megapascal pressure and then step two will remove that so it'll load it slowly and then unload it until step two. But we want to have a varying load so instead of having the independent variables time we can choose Z. So Z here will run along this axis here and I'm not sure why it puts these default values but we're going to go ahead and delete the third one and we know our beam is 500 millimeters so we're going to go ahead and put 500 millimeters and then there you have it. So there it's from 0 to 500 millimeters. You have 0 megapascals uh, to 4 megapascals. So that would be the, uh, the varying distributed load that we just talked about here. So that's this over here. And that's our load, but we're not done yet. We have to go into the graph control to the time, and we want to make sure that at step 2 it removes that load again as well. So we're going to put 0, 1, 0 under the uh, graph control x-axis time and then under the z it's going to be uh, 0 to 4 from 0 to 500 millimeters along the z-axis. So there we go, now we have our load set up. Now all we have to do is uh, run the model. So I'm going to go ahead and solve the model and this is actually going to take a bit of time. So if you go here, um, sorry I'm bringing the, the loading here. So basically instead of seeing the solver output you can go ahead and click on force convergence and then this will show you a force convergence plot. And uh, we're just going to wait a little bit, and then once that's done, um, I'll get back to you. So, see you in a second. Hey, so welcome back, and here we have our results. So, as you can see, it actually took quite a bit of time. Um, again, to reduce the time, you can change the mesh size. Uh, you can also reduce the number of substeps that I put here. You can maybe put 15, 15 instead. That might help as well to, um, to get you a quick result. So once we have our solution, uh, we can go ahead and right click on solution and we can go ahead and insert stress and we can go ahead and insert a, a strain and choose equivalent total strain. Go ahead and evaluate all these results. So that's going to be loading and then here we go. There we go. Now we have our results. So we can see in the stress that the stress hits 313 which exceeds our 250 yield so we can see already that the stress is above the yield strength though so that the beam has failed so you can see here how it failed um, using the result scale this is the true scale if you want to exaggerate it you can go to let's say five times this deformation you can have an exaggerated view of how this beam deforms so let's say we go to let's say 1.4 scale you can go ahead in here and click on animate and it'll give you a little animation from 0 to uh, 4 megapascals and then unloading at the very end. If you want to have more frames, you can go ahead and choose, let's say, 30 frames. And then you get a more detailed view. As you can see, the plastic deformation happens rather quickly. Um, and, then, and then basically, it, it doesn't really recover it to its initial form um, because it's, it's plastically deformed. So the beam has completely failed. So that's another animation. You can go ahead and save that animation as well using this button here. So that's the equivalent stress. And if you wanted to probe the stress in certain areas, you can click on this probe. And then you can click here. And let's say that would be 130 in that area. And then here would be, let's say, 212. To see the maximum, you can click on the max. You can see here it's at the bottom. And that would be where the 313 is. Next is the total strain, so this is the, uh, again, in millimeters per millimeter. And the reason why I'm getting the strain out is because I just want to show you that we're going to be doing the stress-strain plot, uh, which is this one right here. So, oh, sorry again, which is this one uh, uh, over here. So what we're going to do is, in order to do the plot, we're going to just choose a point, and we're going to get some data from that point. So I'm going to go here, I'm going to go into solution again, and I'm going to insert... Um, stress for a me for a mesh node. So I'm going to click on this, which is a node, control N. This is only available, I think, in version 17. So if you don't have this, um, you can go ahead and skip this part. You can actually create a name selection uh, using uh, show mesh and selecting using this point. 
but I'm, this is for 17 uh, users. We can go ahead and click on the uh, node. And then we're going to go ahead and let's say choose this node right there. And then we're going to hit apply. And then what we're going to do is now we have equivalent stress for that node. I'm going to click on this again, right click, insert strain, and then choose equivalent total strain. And now I'm going to go ahead and evaluate those results. So these are the results for just one point on this area, which I know plastically deforms. And then this is the total strain. And you can see it here on a graphically at the bottom. So what I'm going to do now is selecting this and select and holding control and selecting this one, I can go ahead and click on this chart button to create a chart. And now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to choose the x-axis to be the strain, which is the maximum strain. And then I do not want to show the time, so I'm going to double click on the time to omit it. I do not want to show the equivalent stress minimum, double click to omit it and I do not want to show the strain again so I just want to show the stress max so here we go there's the there's your plot so here you have the loading up until 250 megapascals these are these are the results at this point so the stress increases to 250 it starts plastically deforming and then this starts unloading so here you have your your strain uh, unloading. So if you were to technically reload this again, you would start again from here, go up again, and then continue. So that's this. That's basically what's showing you here. You can also go ahead and export this to Excel. So you can go ahead and select these and go export, or you can copy and directly paste it into Excel. So there you have it. There's your. Uh, that's your stress strain plot. And um, other things that you could do, I guess, would be. Uh, um, basically a section cut. So if you want to go ahead and see a section view of the stress, you can click on this button here or this button here and you can go ahead and slice it and then there you have a section view. So there's your section view and um, that's about it. And uh, the final thing is you can also generate a report. So let's click on this delete. You can also click on this and it'll generate a report. Let's say if you want an image um, let's say of like like this, you can go ahead and click on here and insert, uh, let's say, an image. And then that'll take an image of that. So let's say if you go back into stress, you can rotate, click on image, and it'll bring you back to there. And then this image will also be included in the report. So in solution, we could click on report preview, and then this will generate our report for us. So there we have it. There it gives you um, the, uh, the beam. It tells you, uh, you know, get, basically generates a whole report for you. You can go directly to the results. And then here you have some results. And then here's our image, our figure six. And then here's our strain results versus time, which is the loading. So, you know, the strain at for loading and unloading, etc. So I hope this uh, tutorial was informative. And I hope it gives you a better idea of uh, how to use uh, plastic deformation in ANSYS. If you did like this tutorial, please uh, subscribe and please like it. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section below. And finally, this is an image of a actual uh, plastically deformed beam that I got from this website here. So as you can see, once a beam fails, it fails and it's, it, it's a disaster. In this case, it's still being held up, but it basically you basically do not want to uh, go past the yield point of, of, uh, of any material. So anyway, I hope, uh, hope that helps, and uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.